Welcome you beautiful people and the 60% of you who haven't subscribed yet to this month's JW Broadcasting featuring Sam the Reaper himself. In this episode, we're gonna have some crazy interviews, music videos, and you guessed it, a new movie for your spiritual nourishment. You know the tradition by now guys, we're doing the cringe challenge, so if you cringe, you lose. And when you cringe, let me know the exact moment you lost it. Are you ready? Let's get into it. This month I'd like to talk to you on the subject, Jehovah loves you despite appearances are imperfections. Wow, did I hear that right? Jehovah loves you, even if you're ugly as hell? This is the urgent message we need to hear in the final part of the last days. Am I ugly? Some of us tend to compare ourselves to other imperfect humans and adopt the thinking of the masses. Movies and television have blinded many to reality making them feel that the beauty of the human body must look like the handsome and beautiful movie stars and famed athletes. Hmm, is Watchtower going to provide some practical advice on body positivity, or is this just going to devolve into another governing body circle jerk? However, please be assured that Jehovah loves us despite our physical appearance. How would you know that, Sammy? I mean, maybe Jehovah holds on to the beauty standards of a 19-year-old aspiring TikTok influencer. Beauty is only skin deep. It fades with time. Just look at a picture of yourself when you were, let's say, 17. And then look at one when you are in your 80s. You say, that's not me. Oh, yes, it is. Of course, he couldn't resist posting a photo of himself. We should frame it and hang it on the back of every single kingdom hall. You are a precious bird who has come to know and love Jehovah. He loves you not because of your appearance, being handsome, drab looking, short, heavy, skinny, bald, Beautiful, less than beautiful, having warts. The jokes just write themselves. Samuel Hurd is so poetic. Maybe you say, I'm crippled in both feet. I have a trouble walking. I feel dead inside. You know that clip has to go into the meme pile. <laughs> You're not the first servant of Jehovah to feel that way. Mephibosheth evidently felt that way. He too was crippled in both feet. If you have a physical impairment or defect, you're not dead, but very much alive in Jehovah's eyes. Yeah, yeah, you might be alive in Jehovah's eyes, but if you have a walking impediment, don't even try to sign up for the next year's special conventions. Jehovah loves you, but he just doesn't love you enough to have you in this special event, okay? Also, do not try to show up if you're not a ministerial servant or a pioneer or an elder. Because in these special conventions, there's only space for the most dedicated watchtower robots. I mean, <clears throat> servants of Jehovah. But good news, Armageddon has been delayed till at least 2025. Another interesting thing about the conventions, the delegates are not allowed to stay with their family and friends, they have to book a hotel approved by Watchtower. I mean, gotta get those hotel points, am I right? Now let's talk about Jehovah's love for us despite our imperfections. If you're a human, you're imperfect. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Adam passed imperfection on to all of us. This? Is the solid spiritual food that the governing body brags about? Why are we always devolving to the most basic watchtower doctrines? God's name is Jehovah, Jesus died for your sins, we're all imperfect, yada yada, send us money please. Being imperfect, we will all make mistakes. We all do without exception. 
you'll be embarrassed at your imperfect reaction at times. But it happens. Jehovah knows our condition. He knows what Adam handed down to us, yet he still loves us despite imperfection. It really is not our fault. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I'm sorry, Sammy the Whammy. I don't think you're fit for public speaking anymore. I mean, were you ever fit for public speaking? I don't know, but you're as charismatic as a piece of toast left out in the sun. You're an idiot. You're boring. <laughs> so the humans will be able to enjoy not only perfection as to faith and love, but perfection as to sinlessness. Of course, uh, perfection at that time does not mean an end to variety, as some persons often assume. No one assumed that, ever. The animal kingdom, which is the product of Jehovah's perfect activity, contains enormous variety. Yeah, variety that arose naturally over billions of years through natural selection. I mean, even if you want to ascribe all of this to a creator, I wouldn't call this perfect design by any means. Our perfect earth is likewise filled with variety, change, and contrast. It allows for the simple and the complex. It's funny when authoritarian religions pretend to embrace diversity, as if they didn't violently react to any subtle form of dissent. Perfect humans will not be stereotypes with identical personalities, talents, and abilities. May we all fully love and adore Jehovah and His Son, Christ Jesus, in return. Thank you, Brother Hurd, for those encouraging reminders. We know our young people want to look good. Hey, I don't think we've seen this loser before. Donald Gordon. The name doesn't really roll off the tongue. Donald Gordon had a farm. Goodbye, little sheep. But how do you avoid becoming obsessed with how you look? That's the topic of the next episode of the series my teen life. Damn, Watchtower really is doubling down on my teenage life bits. And I'm glad because they're cringe as hell. Oh, most definitely I felt awkward. I didn't wear my clothes a certain way, or I didn't have my hair kept a certain way. My dude, did your hair return invisibly? Um, I didn't wear the latest shoes. It can be really easy to get caught up on social media and trying to see what the new trends were, trying to see how others look. Should I look like that? Why don't I look like that? What can I do to look like that? That I paid such a high price for the body I was going after. I was going after unrealistic beauty standards. Talking about unrealistic beauty standards, have you noticed how Watchtower never uses chubby girls in their propaganda? No, like, I'm serious. We do get a couple of older women who are on the bigger side, but the younger sisters are always conventionally attractive. Hmm, I wonder why that is. <laughs> Imagine if Jade and Nita were portrayed as 300 pound legends. I mean, that would be definitely more realistic, but it wouldn't sell. <laughs> Jade, you haven't answered my DMs. Please marry me. It led me to being diagnosed with an eating disorder. Uh, focusing on my appearance too much affected me spiritually. Even though I was in service, even though I was uh, in meeting, even though I was present for family worship, uh, I wasn't focused. I Wait, why did they use a different dude for the stock footage? Or maybe bro can demelanize at will? Uh, even though we may put so much effort into how we look on the outer parents, eventually that's gonna go away. Something that has really helped me is giving myself time in the day to get off of social media, get off the internet, and giving time, dedicate time to Jehovah. I unfollowed models and influencers that made me feel more insecure about myself, and I would study Bible characters of the past, such as Abigail, Sarah, Ruth. Wait, no, this is terrible advice. Maybe you should learn not to be envious of other people instead of just sticking your head in the sand pretending they don't exist. And it seems unrealistic beauty standards have crept into Watchtower publications as well. 
There's no way Bible women would look this amazing living out in the desert. Letting myself be influenced by them was a game changer for me. What made them more beautiful to the eyes of Jehovah were their qualities, how they treated others, their personality, how they served Jehovah with loyalty. And how many children they could pump out for their husbands. You forgot to mention that. Knowing that I'm making Jehovah happy by helping others get to know him and making disciples is what makes me happy now. And as a pioneer, I finally was able to attend my first pioneer school in March of 2021, which was an amazing blessing from Jehovah. Not sure how this relates to being ugly, but go on. I work on um, being more um, open to people, being more present, uh, being more um, available. Oh my God, bro. Oh, hell no. And trust me, it, it paid off for me because uh, eventually, I received much more privileges in the congregation. I, I was able to serve in different capacities in Jehovah's organization. And above all, I was more happier. Yeah, not the most gracious of speakers for sure. I love how this short video started out with decent advice and not becoming overly fixated on your appearance, but it quickly devolved into bragging about your congregation privileges. Because apparently, Jehovah will judge you by those metrics because God would rather have a 600 pound elder behemoth attend his special conventions instead of someone who can't walk. Beastie boo boo set! <sighs> Here, guys, I'm gonna give you some better advice in case you fall on the ugly side. Say it! Say it! I'm ugly. You're ugly and what? Square? No! Proud! I'm ugly and I'm proud. Good! Say it louder! I'm ugly and I'm proud. Louder! I'm ugly and I'm proud! Louder! In a recent morning worship program, Brother William Turner explains that these inner qualities don't just make us beautiful to Jehovah, but they also make us valuable to Him. What do you think makes us valuable? To Jehovah. Having a massive dick. Is it our natural ability? We. Oui. Our many years of faithful service? See. Si. Is it our Bethel assignment? All of the above. What Brother Turner said is true. Jehovah values us and will give us what we need to fulfill our commission to preach, even if we feel we lack strength or natural abilities. Our music video this month is entitled, He Knows Us. It reassures us that when we are discouraged or tired or afraid, Jehovah knows how we feel. Jesus, I always lose the cringe challenge with the pop songs. the depths of the earth before we even came into this world Jehovah saw right from the start deep down inside our beating heart just stop and think what that means he knows you, He knows me, what we feel, what we see. When we try hard to give our best, the joys we feel and our regrets. Both of these books are already old light. Y'all remember this one before they changed the beautiful gold color to that ugly rat color? <laughs> Hell, do you remember the red one? Which has this beautiful illustration of some failed prophecy. Oh, what's this? It's Mr. Washington. Truly food at the proper time. This reminds me, we just recently hit 50 Patreons on the community. You guys are the best. Because for only one of these bad boys, you can also gain early access to all my work. So please head on over to Patreon to support the cause. Alright now, back to the music video. 
the joys we feel and our regrets. He knows you, he knows me, what we need, what we plead. When we can't find the words to say we're not alone, he knows. So we must look up above and never forget about his love and pray, and pray. Tell him when life is hard and fear's got a grip on our hearts, remember we're okay, we don't have to be afraid. It wouldn't be a JW broadcasting without persecution porn, am I right? To give our best, the joys we feel and our regrets. He knows you, he knows me. What we need, what we plead. When we can't find the words to say we Damn, Mark Sanderson didn't look too terrible here. What the hell happened? I think he took Sammy's advice on not caring about your appearances. A little too seriously. Alone, he knows. And that wasn't too cringe, honestly, just a bunch of footage soon together. You would imagine with the amount of begging they do, Watch Sour would have the budget to shoot some new videos for this piece, but nah. Because as you'll see in a moment, they allocated all their funds to something else. It's so catchy and uplifting. I think we'll all be singing He Knows Us for days to come. <laughs> Next we get this depressing interview from this woman who was born deaf and eventually lost her vision as well. Deaf blind people are the loneliest people in the world. But of course, no degree of disability will excuse you from your obligation to preach. Some of the ways that I support the congregation are by attending meetings, being regular in service. Sometimes I can be helpful in training others how to be more effective teachers. I often join others on their Bible studies. If she can do it, you have no excuse to stay at home. <laughs> While it's true that I'm deaf and blind, I'm not one of the loneliest people in the world. I'm a happy person because I have many friends. I have the joy of helping others to learn about God. And I have the best friend ever, Jehovah. You know, this is one of those rare instances where I think someone should not be woken up. I mean, imagine if she realized that she was duped by a high-control religion, her whole support circle would vanish overnight. We must immerse ourselves in their stories. We're happy to debut a new series that we hope will help you do just that. Please enjoy the first episode of the series, Imitate Their Faith. Wow, it took them long enough. An adaptation of the Watchtower Bible fanfiction, Imitate Their Faith. Remember when we studied this in the meetings? How we took a whole chapter on Abel, even though he had zero lines of dialogue in the Bible? But, well, at least they had some cool illustrations. Abram, dinner's almost ready. Please tell Shem. We'll be right there, Mom. Well, Abram, before we go in, let me tell you the rest. I was just a young man back then. After Jehovah gave my father the command to build the ark, it took decades to complete. Whoa, 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 stop right there. This really is the Watchtower Cinematic Universe. Even if Shem's life overlapped with that of Abraham's, the Bible never even hints at them meeting each other. The movie barely started and we're already making huge assumptions. Then we had to gather food and all the animals. We had no idea how long we would be inside. But when Jehovah closed the ark's door, we 
We were ready. No, you weren't ready. That wooden box would have capsized almost immediately under millions of gallons of water. So were you scared? Abram, I know you're just a boy, but things have happened to you that have scared you, right? Mm -hmm. I was older than you, but I was still scared. When we were building the ark, people thought we were crazy. And then, just like Jehovah said it would, it happened. Ah, I get it now. So people today think Jehovah's Witnesses are crazy for predicting Armageddon for more than a hundred years. But just like happened with Noah, they're gonna realize the errors of their ways and it's gonna be too late because the flood was 100% a historical event and not a legend adopted by Sumerian epics. Well, at least they didn't show drowning babies and mammoths like in my book of Bible stories. Only eight were saved. My parents, my brothers, and our wives. We are living proof that Jehovah's word never fails. Jehovah promised my father that he would never again destroy all life with a global flood. I want you to know I was scared, but I know to trust Jehovah. When Jehovah promises something that we've never seen, it takes a special quality to believe it. Do you know what that quality is? Believing things without evidence? Faith. Same thing. In the Old Testament world of miracles and talking snakes, I don't think it was that hard to have faith, you know? But it's too bad God ended the supernatural science and wonders, but still expects us to blindly believe in Him. Abram and Sarai lived in Ur, a city full of people who worshipped pagan gods. But like Noah and Shem, Abram and Sarai worshipped Jehovah. Abram. That desert sun must be getting to his head. Abram. Go out from your land and from your relatives and come into the land that I will show you. Wait, is that Princess Leia? be so far away from our family. I have every confidence that if we do what Jehovah asks, that things will turn out fine. Well, wherever it is, I will be by your side. There is nothing I would even sacrifice for Jehovah. I know. In reality, Sarai would have no say in the matter, whether she wanted to stay in Ur or haul her ass down to the desert with her husband. Too bad Sarai doesn't know her husband's gonna end up shagging other women. <laughs> Abram and Sarai left Ur. They lived in Haran for some time, but Jehovah told Abram to keep moving. Living in tents was not easy. But the caravan gradually settled into a routine of travel. Abram's nephew Lot was like a brother to him. But as their flocks grew large, tension grew between their groups. Please. There should be no quarreling between me and you, for we are brothers. 
Is not the whole land available to you? Please, separate from me. If you go to the left, then I will go to the right. Though it must have hurt their hearts, they agreed to part ways. Lot moved east to the district of the Jordan, where the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were located. Oh no, not towards the gaze. After Lot had gone, Jehovah made a promise about Abram's future. Raise your eyes, please, and look from the place where you are to the north and south, east and west, because all the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring as a lasting possession. And I will make your offspring like the dust particles of the earth. Does Jehovah have like a breeding fetish or something? Abram, Abram, do not fear Abram. I am a shield for you. Your reward will be very great. Sovereign Lord Jehovah, what will you give me, seeing that I continue childless? Go outside, look up, please, to the heavens and count the stars, if you are able to do so. So your offspring will become. Later, Jehovah changed Abram's name to Abraham, which means father of a multitude. He also changed Sarai's name to Sarah, which means princess. Every day, these new names would remind them of Jehovah's promise. And Jehovah didn't stop there. He sent three angels to reassure Abraham with even more good news. Within the year, he and Sarah would have a son. Why are the angels glowing? They would have been indistinguishable from normal men. The Bible literally says that Abraham did not know he was housing angels. Come on, Watchtower. But they also brought other news. Through one of the angels, Jehovah said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is indeed great, and their sin is very heavy. Will you really sweep away the righteous with the wicked? I wonder if they're going to be using this guy to play Jesus in the upcoming films. I would bet my money on it. And it would expand the cinematic universe even more. It's unthinkable of you. Will the judge of all the earth not do what is right? If I find in Sodom 50 righteous men in the city, I will pardon the whole place for their sake. Please hear I presume to speak to Jehovah, whereas I am dust and ashes. Suppose the fifty righteous should lack five. Because of the five, will you destroy the whole city? Abraham knew that the judge of all the earth always does what is right. But knowing and trusting are two different things. I will not destroy it for the sake of the twenty. Jehovah, please do not become hot with anger, but let me speak just once more. Suppose only ten are found there. I will not destroy it for the sake of the ten. Where the hell is he walking to? I have seen in my life that everything that Jehovah promises always comes true throughout your life, have full confidence Jehovah will always do what is right. If Watchtower doesn't recreate the scene where Sarai hands over her slave girl to bear Abraham's son, I'ma flip some tables. Do you want to see part two of the story of Abraham? Me too. But we have to wait till next month.
so be sure to tune in. First of all, credit where credit is due. The production quality of this is actually really good. Excellent sound mixing, some great shots. The dialogue is still shit, but I'm gonna give it a pass this time. Of course, this is not a Bible live action movie, it's a Watchtower fan fiction live action movie. But hey, I'm actually looking forward to part 2, where Steven Lett will come down as an angel to Sodom and Gomorrah and throw fireballs at the gays. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past Watchtower at this point. Thank you, Brother Hurd. And please, thank the governing body for providing the new Imitate Their Faith series. Jeez, no thank you to Jehovah, or to Jesus, or to the hundreds of unpaid volunteers who made this production possible. Nah, thank you to the governing body for greenlighting the whole thing. You just forced me to use this button. And our propaganda for this month ends with a postcard from the beautiful country of Japan, where Watchtower brags about using a recent tragedy to convert people into their religion. The tsunami and resulting disaster had a big effect on those in the territory. Our brothers have done their best to fill the void that many are feeling with the Bible's message of hope. From the world headquarters of Jehovah's Witnesses, this is... So guys, let me know what you thought of this broadcasting in the comments below and let me know the exact moment you lost the cringe challenge because I love reading your comments. As I previously mentioned, we recently hit 50 Patreons on the community. Guys, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. If you appreciate my work and would like to support my activism, please head on over to Patreon or become a channel member here on YouTube. It's only $1 a month. You gain early access to all my videos and you help me keep doing this for years to come. And don't forget to subscribe because I have some really fun projects coming your way. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a wonderful day and stay away from the tower.